Welcome! This video contains an introduction, an interview so you can gain deeper understanding of the subject from spirit level, and a group frequency calibration so you can start to clear the frequency distortion patterns around this topic. Enjoy! Hi everyone, this is Karen Chong, and I'm here with my co-host Dennis Kelly. In these turbulent times, increasing numbers of people even those who usually consider themselves pretty even keel are succumbing to the stress of dealing with chaos, the worry of an unknown future informed by an unstable present, and the feeling of being powerless to change anything. What's really happening? Today we're going to discuss the unseen dynamic of what is at work and how this turmoil offers you the opportunity to not only strengthen, but also transcend. After the discussion, we're going to wrap it up with a group frequency calibration to help to begin to release the distortion patterns around this topic. So let's dive right in. Dennis? Well, I'll tell you what, Karen, when you talk about turbulent times, I think, uh, boy, I'll tell you, it's, there's just so much going on in our everyday world. And uh, I'm just curious, do you have any thoughts or comments or suggestions for us as we move through these times to just help us kind of stabilize or get a sense of peace about all this? Yeah, um, totally. There is something very specific that you can do. Um, before I get there though, I feel like I need to ex uh, explain what's happening now that may, people may or may not be aware of, just to give context for what's happening. Okay. So there is a number of things happening right now. We have talked about consciousness rising, generally speaking, in many of these most recent episodes, right? That's in part where the denser distortion patterns of these lower vibrating things like oppression, um, abuse, greed, all these types of low, very low level uh, distortion patterns that are running rampant through all of our systems, through our reality in this consciousness realm are breaking away so that we can move into a higher level of consciousness. Okay. That's what's ha currently happening right now. And why in part, we're starting to see a lot of the breaking down, a lot of the unrest, because what we're starting to see is, um, or have more visibility into is the oppression, is the greed, is all of those, um, the, the abuse, all that stuff that's happening. It's becoming very visible to us right now. And that is why so many people are protesting and saying that they've had enough. So they're rising up and trying to claim their sovereignty. Yeah, there is more, of course, oppression being placed on those people who are protesting um, and is it's becoming even more intense at this time. So that's that's one aspect of things. OK, in addition to this general uh, rise in consciousness, which feels very intense, uh, very chaotic, there are also auric fields that are being created around each of these disparate things, which are um, being experienced and contributing to like the rise in consciousness. Okay. And so what I mean by that is that there are auric fields that are being created. So backing up um, an auric field, um, people think about it simply just in terms of the body. Typically, you know, like we've heard of auras, we've heard them around the body and that type of thing. For anybody who studied like chakras or um, different kind of energy systems, you'll know what an aura is and what the auric fields of the body are. What I'm talking about is auric field created by a very large number of people putting their attention on the same thing for an extended period of time. Okay, so we can either do it in one go, meaning create it like because it's such an extended period of time, or we can create auric fields around things because we place our attention on mass on something at, at repetitive points in time. So that might be like a sporting event or like a, um, a holiday or something like this. Okay, in this particular case, though, I'm talking about auric fields around certain things that are consuming a lot of our attention right now. So that would be things like the coronavirus, like political instability, like um, natural disaster. All, each of these things, they are their own. I'm not saying they don't have their own dynamic. They do. The auric field that's being created around them is in our response to it. 
Okay, so each org field, I just uh, want to, because I can feel that your question coming, Dennis. Um, uh, uh, each org field um, is conditioned by the collective. And so as a result, it starts to have those distortion patterns and um, emotions like and thoughts really amped up within it and certain behaviors. So it can be very easy to get pulled into that collective experience if you don't have enough internal stability to um, hold yourself or even be aware that you're actually just starting to reflect the collective experience. So that's why I mentioned that we're in these auric fields because a lot of people don't realize they're being pulled into them. I, I, you know, I can really relate to what you're talking about because uh, just for example, the patent, uh, the whole virus thing, you know, it, it's just so easy to get caught up, you know, as far as the response from the politicians, as far as the school system, as far as the local government. And so there's just a lot of media coverage around, you know, the pandemic and what do we do and how do we address it and how do, you know, mask, no mask and all that. So that collective energy is very powerful, it's very strong, and it has quite a pull to it. And so mm -hmm. I think what you're saying is if we can do the work, we can play above that energy. Yeah, so it's to first even realize that there is an orc field there. Most people don't even know that it's there. And that, that as, and as, so to, to your point, yes, it's to hold your strength, to have your own inner stability so you're not as affected by that auric field. And my point is that once you're even aware that that auric field is happening, that it's not necessarily you. So meaning that you um, on your own might be feeling a certain way, but once you enter the auric field, you kind of get pulled into the emotions, the experience, the thoughts of that collective because you're in that auric field. Does that make sense? You're like physically set in that in that field. So it's very difficult to um, not be swayed by those things. And what I'll mention is I'll just, I have a little diagram here in case it's helpful for people. So I have this little diagram just in case it helps. So I'm hoping you can all see this. Yeah. Okay. So each of these spheres is an, a representation of an auric field. Okay. So just for clarity, and I've drawn them in different colors so you can see them. So let's just imagine the red this, this guy over here, that's um, the coronavirus. Okay, I'm just making stuff up. So in terms of like representation. So let's imagine that here, okay, if you're just in this one orc field by yourself, like here in this portion of it, and there's no other orc fields involved, you're fine. You are aware that people are freaked out, but you generally are feeling okay. All right, you're, you're doing pretty good. Like you're like, okay, I, I still have my job and like, I, I know people are freaked out, but I still feel okay. Like I'm doing the best I can to um, be as stable and as awesome as, as I am. So I'm doing good. Okay, so then let's imagine here in this purple, you have natural disaster. Okay, so now you reside in this center point between these two, where these two, do you understand what I'm saying, where these two spheres overlap? So let's just say this is natural disaster. So on the West Coast, which is on fire, uh, that is something that's very present for you or um, anywhere where you're having natural disaster, you know, like hurricane force winds, massive storms, whatever, right? You're now in the response to the, in this auric field of natural disaster, right? There's a collective response to this as well. There's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of feeling oppressed by the, the, um, the disempowerment that we feel because we can't really do anything about it. Um, you know, our feelings towards the government and whether they're helping us and whatever, the, all that stuff. Yeah. So you're here in this, in this org field. So on your own, you might be okay, right? Like if it were just you and natural disasters, depending on where you were, you probably feel like, okay, I can kind of hang in there and feel mostly okay. However, if now you have the natural disaster and the coronavirus, you're in this midpoint, it starts to be harder for you. You start to get pulled into the, the, the feeling of um, the fear, the instability, the anxiety, the worry, all that stuff. Yeah. That happens, right? Like, oh my God, my like people, like I'm um, feeling people's uh, despair because their homes are disappearing or their livelihoods are going away, et cetera. Right. And that's compounded by all the stuff that's happening with the coronavirus. Do you see what I'm saying? You're at the center point. Now let, let's add now this green sphere at the bottom or however that appears to you, whatever color that is to you. Um, this one, let's just call this political unrest. 
Okay, so now you're watching the unfolding of, depending on where you live, there's political oppression happening all over the world, whether or not you're in Hong Kong or Belarus or the United States or wherever you're living right now, chances are there's unrest happening, okay, on different levels against different things, but there's political unrest happening at a kind of unprecedented level at this moment, and it's getting more intense. So let's imagine that you typically on your own would be like, okay, that doesn't really affect me. I'm not a political person, whatever. But now you're in the middle of all these three spheres. So now there's like, now you're feeling disempowered, angry, uh, you're starting to cast blame. You're just like pissed, okay? Because you're just like, I'm here in the middle. I can only feel turbulence because you're being pulled by the auric fields of all three. Make sense? It's very, very difficult in the, in, with all this happening. If you're right here in the center, experiencing all three, the intensity of all three, to have a sense of your own stability. Make sense? Given the pull of all three things. So that's my point, is that it's hard. When you were taking a look at those three different areas, Karen, you know, mm -hmm. those are kind of uh, very kind of remote things. And I was thinking, just think if I had a personal situation now. Exactly. You know, let's say that one of my children is sick or I just got told that I lost my job or mm -hmm. that uh, my house just burnt down. So mm -hmm. very personal, laid over the top of all those other activities that you were talking about. I mean, it's just like, oh, my Lord. Yeah. So those things aren't part of the auric field, but they can make you more in unstable and more susceptible to the auric field. So agreed. So, so I, I hear your point. Yes. When you have that personal impact, it can make you even more unstable and as a result, more susceptible to the collective, right? So meaning if you weren't in the auric field of any of those things and you had that personal thing happen to you where you lost your job or someone got sick or your house burned down, that already is a very, uh, can be a very traumatic thing that you have to overcome, but you might be able to do that. You know what I mean? You have the inner strength to be like, okay, we're just going to get through this, right? Somehow we're together. We're going to get through this and, or by whatever, you're just going to get through it and you can hold your own stability. But if you add that in within the dynamic of an auric field individually, and then now doubled and now tripled, now it becomes more intense and it can be very hard for us to maintain our stability in the field of the, do you understand the field of these, of these things that are happening, which by the way, are there, okay, because it presents an opportunity. And um, it doesn't sound like it is, but to answer your very first question, which is what can we do in the face of all this? So the act of power is to hold your space. Okay. So holding your space is a very foundational concept. It is something that people are like, okay, well, uh, yeah, I can do that often. Um, but the thing is, it's sometimes the very simplest, most foundational things are easy to say or to remember in the moment and very difficult to practice. Okay. So it's to remember to hold your space, to be vigilant, because that's what gives you the internal stability. It, the more you cultivate your inner space in terms of the frequency resonance that you are, the more you release your distortion patterns, the more that you are aware of your connection only to pure source, the stronger you become. Now, once you have, are doing that, let's just say, it's to remember to hold your space, to know the difference between you and other, and that you don't have to get pulled into the dynamic of the auric field. So yes, of course, are you going to be experiencing, I mean, are you aware of the auric fields around you? Are you aware of consciousness rising and all this stuff happening, creating all this chaos? Yes, of course you are. And you can also do the work to hold your space so that your frequency resonance isn't as impacted by the external circumstance. Okay. So that's what I mean by cultivating inner stability. So, um, you know, I think, I think of myself as an energetic field. So when you talk about holding my space, it's mm -hmm. basically first me recognizing that I have a unique space of my own. 
Yes. Right. Thank you for asking. So, um, so what I mean by holding your space is, so if you can imagine your spirit body. So for those of you who are brand new and who have never done a GFC, you probably won't know what I'm talking about. So I would recommend that you do the GFC at the end of this interview so you can get a sense of what it means to hold your space because the GFC will start to help you cultivate that on frequency level. That's the most important thing. The interview and the talking is helpful. It conditions the space, you can start to feel the frequencies of that. The GFC is where the work is done. So um, anyway, for those of you who are more familiar, this will seem more familiar to you, but I always feel like the more you repeat, a master repeats the basics, the foundations over, over and over again, because that's where you gain strength. So in any case, holding your space means becoming aware of the sphere that is your spirit body, which is at arm's length all around you. That's your spirit body. It, that sphere okay, your spirit body, and this is a bit of a leap, so go with me here a little bit. That sphere of your spirit body is resonating at a much higher level than your physical body, right? Because it's obviously faster in vibration than the density of your physical body. That sphere is what is projecting like a hologram, what you think is your physical body in the very center of it, okay? That's the physical thing that you think is you and around you is your physical reality. So it's just a hologram. Now, if you will go into this in more depth on another episode, because I, I don't want to go into that right now, because we'll just end up on this huge tangent. But anyway, that's the very best basic premise. Holding your space means being aware of that spirit body, which is that sphere at arm's length around you, and that no one comes into this space it's, it's a sacred space. This is between the space is for you, your higher self, pure source. That's it. No one else gets to be in this space. If you do allow people into this space, that's when we can start to feel overwhelmed, angry, frustrated, disempowered, controlled, whatever, because we have frequencies that are not yours running through the space that is meant just for you that's when it feels bad. It can start to reduce or lower our frequency resonance and we can start to really feel dis like not good. Okay. So holding your space means to be aware of that space as yours, to f be aware of something that is not in your space is in your space and to push it out. That's what I mean by holding your space. I also just want to add that it doesn't mean that you're not close to people emotionally. Okay. So it doesn't mean you have to be emotionally distant from people. It just means that you don't have their frequency distortions running through you. Okay. Their frequency patterns running through you. So, um, that your individual being, so a lot of people will think, well, I really want to be close to my spouse. I really want to be close to my mom. I want to be close to whomever. And so they think that they have to enmesh on spirit level in order to be emotionally close to them. But that's not true. You actually, can be separate on spirit level, which makes you both stronger, right? More aware of your connection only to pure source and still emotionally close. Okay. So I, I don't mean that it causes you to be isolated uh, from an emotional perspective. I mean, from a frequency perspective, because that you want to be independent, these independent spheres that are strong so that you aren't running patterns of control in either direction, right? They're not controlling you. You're not controlling them, etc. You're clear of all that stuff, right? So you're not running their patterns and they're not running yours. So hopefully that makes sense in terms of what I mean by holding your space. And, and so would you say, Karen, that maybe one of the first steps as far as holding our space is to actually honor ourselves and who, mm -hmm. who we are and what we are? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would say that um, it's, to be, it's to be aware of who you are. Um, I would say it's, um, well, it's, to me, it's more about time and space, actually. So it's to be aware of where you are in time and where you are in space and to hold the sphere of your spirit body. So what do I mean by that? So um, time and space are the foundations upon which this reality sit. Okay. If you are not in sync with time, you can start to feel um, a whole bunch of not good things from depressed, stuck, lethargic. Um, you can start to feel um, uh, that's what happens when you're behind time, when you're not in the present moment of time. If you're ahead of time, you can start to feel neurotic and like you're chasing time and things are going too fast. So that's 
So when you're not in the zero point of time, you could feel not good. We're going to go into time in more depth in a different episode. Okay. So what I'll just say is the upshot, if you didn't understand any of that is fine. But what I'm telling you is if you're not in time in the center point of linear time in the present moment, it can feel not good. When you're not in the zero point of space, which happens to be right in the center point of your body, which is the center point for most of us, right in the center of your solar plexus. Um, when you're not in space, meaning you're not anchored in your body, in this very specific point, you can start to feel um, like you are easily bullied, like you're pushed around, like you have to be a people pleaser, you are... Um, you can, um, and I don't mean pushed around just by people who are in bodies. You can be pushed around by things that are not in bodies. So it can feel not good. Okay. You can feel like you're not really anchored in this reality very well. Like you aren't really present very often, that type of thing. Okay. So when you are experiencing that distortion of space and time, you're not very present. It can be hard for you to focus and be present. When, when you are, however, cultivating more of a focus on time and space, that's really the mastery, okay? And that's in part what's gonna happen in the GFC. That's when you can start to hold your space better because you have a, a sense of where you are. Does that make sense? In time and space. And therefore, you have a sense of your boundary of the spirit body that's a sphere at arm's length all around you. It's a natural consequence of coming in more to the zero point of time and space. I know that was a little bit more out there than you might have expected, but that's kind of what it is. You, you know, what I'd like to do, Karen, is, is kind of circle all the way back to kind of where we started. And uh, there being a lot of chaos in the world around us and what I think you helped us with is the, f the fact is that what we have to do is be very much aware of ourselves and truly learn how to hold our space, especially during these times. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, holding your space is critical. Um, like I said, it sounds, uh, easy, um, in a way it's like, Oh, I just have to be mindful. It's true in part. It, it's about mindfulness. It's also about refining your own understanding. And I don't mean from the mind only, I mean, an experience of where you are in space and time. So you can be aware of that spirit body, what's outside of it and what is clear inside of it, meaning just yourself. So that is an act of power. It's difficult to convey in words because it's not a mental understanding. This is about experience, experiential knowingness. This is about your frequency resonance. So as much as you and I can talk about this, Dennis, it's really about doing the frequency work. So in part, once you do the frequency work, it's to become even more aware of the space that is you. So you're aware when you're getting pulled out of it, or people are coming into it so that you um, can feel a sense of stability and not only stability, but um, expansion, right? So you can, it's, it's, it's easier to have expansion when we have more stability, right? So if we're unstable on stuff, you don't, there's no expansion feeling. It only feels unstable and you're focused on, on the fear of that. So the more you have the sense of where you are in space and time, the more you can hold your space, the more stable you are in the face of all of this chaos. Also, it gives you the opportunity to increase your frequency resonance and expand because the external pressure is so great right? Because these auric fields are so strong. It's kind of like I've mentioned before, where, you know, coal goes through a lot of pressure in order to become a diamond, right? To clarify, to become a diamond. Well, it's kind of like that, right? We're going through a lot of pressure. And if you can hold your space and clarify that, that's the opportunity for us to increase our frequency resonance, to have acceleration on the spirit level, which also will then impact and have us and come down into the physical and see change on the physical level as well. So it's really kind of cool because when that exponential shift happens on spirit, not only do you see change on the physical level, but you start to experience the physical from a different perspective. And that in itself can be a game changer. You know, and I think that's truly the beauty of these podcasts that you have produced is the fact that you introduce these concepts and these ideas, and then it allows folks to do the work and then come back a month, two months, three months later, 
and to listen to this information again, and their perspective has changed completely because they actually have started to go through the transformation that you're talking about. And everything really starts to make so much more sense then. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Karen, thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Karen, could you help me? I hear so often when I look at uh, your video or your website, GFC. Exactly what is that? A GFC is a group frequency calibration, which looks a lot like a guided meditation on a particular topic. And what I'm doing is I'm helping you to remove the distortion patterns of that particular topic. And because you're coming together as a mastermind in a group to connect to pure source even more and to clear the distortion patterns of this particular topic, what happens is a tremendous amount of momentum starts to happen because of the energetic of the entire group. And each individual is able to move faster and ascend higher than they could have on their own. Welcome everyone to the group frequency calibration for an act of power in turbulent times. So the theme of this group frequency calibration is holding your space. So the first thing in holding your space is awareness of the body. Okay, so that's why we always start an EGFC with awareness of the body. So let's begin. Becoming aware of your body. And as you become aware of your body, becoming aware of the soles of your feet. And as you become aware of the soles of your feet, noticing where they are touching, the texture of whatever that is. If your feet are bearing weight, just noticing the soles of your feet. Good. Bringing your attention now, please, to where your ears meet your head. Yep. Specific and often something you don't think about, especially if you don't wear glasses. Becoming aware of this space. Good. And now becoming aware of your breath. And as you become aware of your breath, just notice it at first without changing it. Just noticing your breath. And after a couple of seconds of noticing your breath, taking the opportunity to deepen your breath. To allow it to become more full. To fill not only your front body, but your back body. So as the air fills your chest, imagining it filling your upper back as well and noticing if you can allow it to drop into your belly in addition to your lower back. Good. And now please become aware of your surroundings. And as you become aware of your surroundings, Becoming aware of the sound around you, other than the sound of my voice. And if you can, noticing the direction from which the sound is coming.
Mm -hmm. And now, either with eyes open or eyes closed, noticing the quality of the light. Some of you can feel the quality of the light without opening your eyes, and some of you prefer to look at it. Neither is better, they're just different. Same spectrum, opposite ends. Good. Yes. And now, please, triangulate. So for those of you who are new, triangulating simply means becoming aware of three inanimate objects in the space around you. What those objects are is irrelevant. And as you become aware of each of these objects, perceiving the difference, distance, excuse me, between the object and you. So for example, object A may be the dresser. The dresser is about seven foot away from me. Now feel the distance between the dresser and you. And then continue to do that for objects B and C. And what you'll notice as you do this is that your sense of where you are in space becomes more clear or more focused or somehow more present for you. Good. And now becoming aware of the lower back half of your skull. Yep. Yeah. And as you become aware of the lower back half of your skull, we're going to take a nice deep breath, holding your breath for a count of five. Releasing the breath whenever you're ready. And I finished that five count. And then after you've exhaled all the air out of your lungs, holding your breath out for a count of six. And whilst we wait for the mastermind to coalesce or to become more coherent, please note that I'm working on you at the group and the subgroup level and that I'll be working often in silence, especially when I'm working with very high frequencies. To make physical noise only reduces the resonance of the frequency. I will also occasionally make noises like humming or yawning or exhaling sharply. And that's how I often remove the lower, denser frequencies. Not always, but often. Good. And since we're still waiting, if there's something I say that resonates with you, it's likely yours. And if I say something that you really resist because it couldn't possibly be you, it's likely yours, so I invite you to remain open and to examine further. Good. Now that the mastermind has coalesced, bringing your attention to the upper part of your solar plexus, meaning your solar plexus is between your belly button and the base of your sternum. Your sternum is that big thick bone in the center of your chest where your ribs meet in front of your body. Then find the midway point between those two spaces and then focus on the space between the midway point and the base of your sternum. That is what I call the upper solar plexus. 
keeping your attention in this space of your body, we're going to go ahead and ask ourselves the following question. How can I become even more aware of my connection only to pure source? And that question again for those of you who are new is how can I become even more aware of my connection only to pure source? And as you ask yourself that question, please imagine, sense, feel, or become aware of the space deep in the center of your body. And as you become aware of this space, becoming aware of or imagining a brilliance at its very, very core that you either see or feel. And this brilliance starts to intensify because you have your attention on it. And it naturally expands now outwards through all of your cells, out through your organs, through your bone structure, out through your flesh and your muscles, radiating even further out through the pores of your skin into the space between your physical body and your spirit body, which is a sphere at arm's length all around you. Now become aware of the brilliance within the sphere. And now please imagine or become aware of the space all around the sphere. And as you become aware of this space, it, I'm working on you at spirit level. to increase your frequency resonance, irrespective of where your resonance began. The higher your resonance, the more effective the session, because it's coming from the highest resonating order. It also allows for faster integration and more momentum.
Good. Becoming aware of your forehead and the space behind your forehead. Mm -hmm. In addition to your solar plexus, which is between your belly button and the base of the sternum. So the first distortion patterns we're going to remove are a bundle. So one is this distortion pattern of feeling guilty or bad for holding your space because there's a pretty large subgroup of you where you feel like you have to take on the burdens or um, the baggage of others in order to be a good person. The next distortion pattern is that you won't hold your space because you'd like to go outside of it in order to control other people okay, or circumstances to make yourself feel safe and secure. So instead of holding your space, you will ooze out of your space into someone else's. And then the third is this inability to hold your space in the face of the collective. Because if you're not feeling what they're feeling, then somehow you're um, not honoring them, or again, you're not a good person, or sympathetic, or compassionate, or whatever it is. So releasing these patterns. So bring your attention between your belly button all the way up in a straight line to the hollow of your throat. Okay. This is the distortion pattern of low self-worth, non-deserving, of holding your space, meaning you almost have to let someone into your space okay, in order to love them, like them, be friends with them, whatever it is, okay, you, or even just like work with them. So it's like you can't hold your space, you're not really allowed to because you're not deserving of this space that is sacred in a way, it's between you, your higher self, and pure source. So that space is not um, valuable enough, not worthy. So let's release this because it's a huge distortion. So meaning <clears throat> other people's emotions, urgencies, stresses, etc. are more important than you maintaining your equilibrium, your center, your stability, your strength. Okay? 
So we're going to release that because it's not true unless you re really want to have it be true. Okay, you have free will. Becoming aware, please, of the center point of your solar plexus. In addition to the sphere that's all around you at arm's length. And as you become aware of this sphere, helping you to strengthen and hold this space clear. Okay, so meaning from outer edge of the sphere all the way through into the core of your body. Helping you with this. Good. Bringing your attention to that xiphoid process again, right at the base of your sternum. you move into the present moment of space, the center point of your body in the middle of your solar plexus, the center point of time, the zero point, which is the present moment in linear time. If you want to watch episode 80, what is time? Lots of information there. Pushing you. into the zero point of space and time. It's easier to hold your space when you're centered around these points. xiphoid process right at the base of that sternum, about three inches or seven centimeters directly beneath it towards your belly button, clearing out, resetting, and integrating your pain body. Good. This brings us to the end of this session. I look forward to working with you on the next GFC. 
These GFCs help people release distortion patterns. It's my sincere hope that you benefit profoundly from this series, which is why I spend so much of my personal resources creating these as my gift to the world. If a GFC topic resonates with you, often more work that can be provided in this one GFC is needed to really clear or loosen deeply held distortion patterns in areas that are sticky. Because these patterns are like layers of an onion, usually there are multiple layers to individual topics. Depending on how much of a challenge this topic is for you, it may make sense for you to go deeper than what this session allows. If you feel this is the case for you, please visit sphericalluminosity.com for more targeted support.